Hello, welcome to the second part. In this part, we're going to go with a fuel tank. So in the last video, we already made the screen that I have here. And now I will be starting with the tank. So I'm going to start out with the tube. And we're going to make it a polygon. We're going to close the caps. And I'm going to increase the amount of columns we have. So then I'm also going to scale my tube a little bit thinner and I will be using a quick group and with this quick group I'm going to make sure I always have the top selected and in an extrude I can then use this to extrude on the top so if I fill in the group in here selection I have now this extrusion a nice trick here is that if we copy the extrude node and we just plug it in here we can see that automatically we are keep extruding on that primitive and this makes it super easy then to start procedurally modeling this by just using this extrude so as you could see here i have done three extrudes and if i go back to my tube and would change the columns everything stays the same we can see that our extrusions are keeping the same ratio while lowering the poly count so that's useful to have we can always in here tweak these values and we can keep stacking up the nodes and model now what you are looking for so i'm gonna model something that looks like a tank a fuel tank So you could, for example, model something that looks like this. So we have a bunch of extrude nodes here, as you could see here. And I'm also going to color some of the useful extrude nodes now, so I later know which one are the important ones or the useful ones. So if I want to, for example, lower or higher this part, so I know it's this one. And in my case, because I always repeated sort of the same process where I have a part that is straight up and then a part that goes inwards so if you look at the nodes in here my inset is zero then my inset is, has a value here it's back zero has a value back zero and so on so everywhere it's zero I'm going to color it green so I have colored these and now I can tweak these we can later expose these values if you want to then i'm going to make this shape a bit more interesting and so with the transform node and i'm going to make sure so i'm going to use the transform and make sure we have the center filled in here and i'm going to scale this up a little bit to begin with and and then i will boolean shapes in this so here is an example i'm going to use a box subtract so the idea is that if we merge these back together so we have this effect going on you can also in the boolean enable here surface and you will notice that it doesn't it's not going to close this part anymore so it's just going to create oh, a gap and now i can tweak my shapes so i will be beveling in my box and here and here I can then give it the bevel and then we can also rotate this for example and scale this on something you would like to have so this could be the first shape and then I'm going to copy this and do this multiple times so we can merge this result and 
I will do that one more time then. Maybe there's also a box over here somewhere. And we can tweak this on how it, how the shape is going. We can also increase the beveling here. And now I can do the other shape as well. And maybe this one is around this place. We can always use uh, edit note if you want to. So what we could do is then tweak the shape a bit more manually. So I can, for example, make something that looks like this. So this is then the outer layer that comes on top of the tank. And here we can also add an extrude and we can use this extrude to get these edges. And here we change this value. So in here it's going to create these big primitives. So if you would not like that, we can always afterwards add an extrude and then we can have on specific areas these placements. And I'm going to add that in here. Maybe also tweak the scaling. So you have something that looks like this. What could also be nice if that we maybe have like a glowing part in here. And I will also be using a boolean for that. And starting with the box. And I would like to have the glowing part somewhere here. I'm going to reverse the boolean to a subtraction. We can also create a more interesting shape than just a box. So in here I'm going to so I'm going to add extra divisions to my box and I will go to my box and I'm going to edit it. And now we can drag this shape a bit and have some variation going on. I could then also extrude the box. I can also scale the box. So we have, for example, this shape going on. So based on what you want, you can then you can then add this here. And in here, I will actually take the re. Uh, Take the intersection one, so we extract that piece. And I will be doing the same as I did with the outer shell. I will scale it, but in here I will scale it a little bit down. So let's go to 0.98. So it's like a little bit smaller. And what if we merge this result? Then we have this effect going on. We can also already color this. So we know that this should be then the glowing part. We can also already store this in a group. So later on I can ask this information and I will be calling it lights. So now we have the base of the tank. And with this base set up, I want to make some details, some models. I want to make some props to detail the tank. And I'm going to keep it fairly simple. So here on the side, I'm going to make a model that could be used. And I will be having a tube. Set it again to polygons. Close the caps. And I will be using a bevel. And in this bevel, I only want to bevel actually the top part. So we can here go to the exclusions and ignore flattened edges and increase this distance. So basically it's going to look at the normal angle on where bevel should be. So here I only want a bevel around these top parts. Then I would like to have a box and this box 
it's gonna sit here like this and I'm gonna make it a bit longer and then I will be duplicating this box and the idea is that this is going to spin around like this and a small trick here is that if we reference this here we have then access to the amount of numbers and I'm gonna divide by 180 degrees so every time I increase the numbers it's gonna automatically place down the correct amount that I would like to have to have a full circle of detail so you can also go back here and scale this box if you feel like it should be thinner then merging this together so we have this result and I would also like to have this part at the top and I can do this with a transform and I can simply place it here I can also scale this a bit here so we have some variation in scale there and I'm going to axis align it so I know it's perfectly placed in the center and I will be using a null node so I can reference this later on to multiple places so out detail 1 and now I will make a simple variation on this and I'm in here I'm going to copy paste the network and let's say that these are for example smaller so then we have a second detail a smaller version and you can create more details if you want to or you can even load in your own greeble or details then I also will be needing some pipes and I will be making a base pipe and for that I'm gonna start out with a curve and I'm gonna enable snapping and I'm gonna draw a simple curve like this now on this curve I want to bevel the points because I want to have a smooth corners on the curve and it will be when we increase the distance we nothing is really happening and that's because we need to set it here to points and also increase the divisions so we have a smooth transition over there then I want to give it some geometry and then you can use the, the sweep node for this so in the new sweep node we can then use the round tube and then we have a round tube as you can see we can also increase columns and radius if you would like to also have UVs we can enable here the UVs and then we have UVs on my tube then I would like to have these rings placed here automatically and I will be copying the bevel and instead of having here four divisions I'm gonna put it down to one and I'm gonna convert the line to primitives so in here in this bevel everything is one primitive you can see the zero here so this is one primitive and with the convert line you can see that we have multiple primitives so each line is a primitive then we could use the group range to to make our selections and and I will be deleting the the parts that we beveled so in the group range I can here go to the off and we can set this to 2 and now we have 0 2 and 4 selected but I only want to have 2 and 4 selected and not 0 so I'm going to change the starting point so right now it starts from primitive 0 but what if it starts from primitive 2 then it's going to automatically select 2 and 4 then we can blast this so in here I didn't change the name so it's called group 1 by default then I will be place a polyframe node and this is then to correct the normals so if I fill in here normals 
we can now see that our normals are following this line. If we didn't blast away these, these chamfered edges, you can see that some of these normals are facing the other direction based on that other edge. So if we delete it, we see that the normals are perfectly following the edge. So now we can use a copy to points and we can use a tube and we can copy then the tube on the points. So I'm going to set the tube to primitive, close the caps, and now we should also find the right orientation. And we might need to scale this down. Then we can also merge this back in here and fine tune this part. So we have a basic pipe. So we can also use this as a pipe tool. So as you can see, if you move the curve, we can move where the pipe is going. We can also add some more details here. That's for example, maybe you want to have some bolts and I can use the tube for that and creating here six columns and I'm going to place and I'm going to place this right here, maybe a bit smaller. And then I will be using the duplicate node here and then copy this in a circle. And just like I did before, I'm going to copy this number here and reference it here. And then I'm going to divide by 360 degrees. So if I now add more, I can see it's automatically being nicely placed in a circle. And now I have these bolts and we can easily then tweak how much I would like to have. Also here, I'm going to reference this. So with a null node, and I'm going to call it out pipe one. So back to our fuel tank model, we can then place these models. We can then start to place these models on the tank. So with an object merge nodes, I can then ask that model back. So if I here simply would type in out, I can see my details and my pipes. And for the moment, the way I'm going to place them is by just using a transform and I'm going to place them where I would like to have them. Also, the scaling might be off. Let's say there is one here in front. Then I'm going to use another transform here. Maybe we have some few details on top like this one right here. Maybe there's more of them, so I can just copy the notes and place and move this other one here. And then I can further use the transform notes. And I'm going to create the pipe, for example, here on top. like this and then I can want another pipe. This other pipe could be nice to have somewhere here on the side. And then we have placed these details around the model. So this is not the most super procedural way to do it. So you're gonna have to decide if you if it has a benefit if you make this procedural. Like you don't always have to build in everything procedural if you're not going to use it. So in my case, I'm not going to create a procedural system to place this. It is possible, but I'm going to leave it for that. And here at the bottom, I'm also going to create a null node and I'm going to call this out tank. So I know this is the tank part. And that was this for this part. So we have our basic model of a tank. And in the next part, we will be start combining the screens and a tank to create a real terminal or station.